But aside from that, when we talk about uh, the concern of the environment as an elitist concern, one year ago, I was waitressing in a taco shop in downtown Manhattan. I just got health insurance for the first time a month ago. This is not an elitist issue. This is a quality of life issue. You want to tell people that their concern and their desire for clean air and clean water is elitist? Tell that to the kids in the South Bronx, which are suffering from the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. Tell that to the families in Flint, whose kids have their blood is ascending in, in lead levels. Their brains are damaged for the rest of their lives. Call them elitist. Tell, you're telling them that those kids are trying to get on a plane to Davos? People are dying. They are dying. And the response across the other side of the aisle is to introduce an amendment five minutes before a hearing and a markup. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. And we're here and, and people are more concerned about helping oil companies than helping their own families? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is about our lives. This is about American lives. And it should not be partisan. Science should not be partisan. This, we are facing a national crisis. And if we do not ascend to that crisis, if we do not ascend to the, to, to the levels in which we were threatened at the Great Depression, when we were threatened in World War II, if we do not ascend to those levels, if we tell the American public that we are more willing to invest and bail out big banks than we are willing to invest in our farmers and our urban families, then I don't know what we're here doing. I don't know what we're here doing. You know, we talk about cost. We're gonna pay for this whether we pass a Green New Deal or not. Because as towns and cities go underwater, as wildfires ravage our communities, we are going to pay. And we're either, have, we're either gonna decide if we're gonna pay to react or if we're gonna pay to be proactive. And what we know is that prevention, you know, when you spend less money on prevention, you would, uh, you can prevent a lot of that damage from happening in the first place. So it's not a question of whether we're gonna spend the money because I'm very sad to say that the government knew that climate change was real starting as far back as 1989 when NASA was reporting this and the private sector knew way back in the 1970s. So we had until around the time I was born to address this issue. I wish it didn't have to cost so much but I'm gonna turn 30 this year, and for the entire 30 years of my lifetime, we did not make substantial investments to prepare our entire country for what we knew was coming. So now it's coming all up at the end. It's like when we live our whole lives, and we don't eat healthily, and we don't move, and, and we pursue unhealthy activities, and then at the end of our lives, our healthcare costs are very high. We have the choice to lower the cost now, because I can tell you the cost of pursuing a Green New Deal will be far less than the cost of not passing it. And with respect to, to our, our brothers and sisters and neighbors that are in agriculture, bring them to the table. Let's hold hearings. Let's add provisions. Let's amend the, the legislation to accommodate for the just transition and for the encouragement of those industries to grow. And I would also encourage to my colleague on the other side of the aisle that thinks we're trying to ban cows to actually read the resolution and understand that there's nothing to that effect in the legislation. And not only that, but we're trying to invest in these communities and our agricultural workers so that they can enjoy prosperity into the next century. That was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez blowing a hole in nearly every bad faith argument presented by Republicans as they twist themselves into pretzels to oppose the Green New Deal. In their breathless desperation to delay solving the problem, the right is now trying to present climate change as an elitist issue, when in fact it's the complete opposite. Because when the next thousand year storm floods a small coastal town in Texas or Louisiana, or a tornado touches down in Iowa, or wildfires take out thousands of acres from northern to southern California, when drought ravages our farmers' crops and less rainfall in Utah 
shrinks the water levels in lakes, exposing alkaline dust which pollutes the air, when more people were killed in Puerto Rico than on 9-11 because of an endless barrage of Cat 5 hurricanes, everyone is going to suffer. But here's the saddest part about all of that. Republicans know that climate change is serious. They know that it's caused by humans and that it's wreaking havoc on our economy and our planet. But their re-election campaigns are paid by the fossil fuel companies that stand to lose business if we shift to renewables. That's all. It's not rocket science. In the last general election, 19 of the top 20 recipients of oil and gas money in the Senate were Republicans. And 20 out of the top 20 recipients of oil and gas money in the House were also Republicans. The GOP is not acting on behalf of their constituents. They're acting on behalf of themselves. And instead of governing when the effects of climate change are costing our country billions of dollars and actual human lives, they stick to the same tired script of decrying socialism or saying that Democrats are for post-birth abortion or whatever BS lie they're feeding to their low information base. But the reality is that the majority of Americans do support a Green New Deal, including 92% of Democrats and 64% of Republicans. So at this point, Republicans who pivot to cow farts and eliminating airplanes as some desperate excuse to oppose the legislation are not only fooling themselves, but disregarding the will of the people they're supposed to be representing. And of of course, the effects of climate change are going to cost more as the situation becomes more dire. That's not to say it won't be expensive, but more expensive than $160 billion to clean up after Hurricane Katrina, and $125 billion after Harvey, and $70 billion after Sandy, and $50 billion after Irma, and $25 billion after Ike. And none of that was investment. That was all just to get back to zero. That was just to repair damage. And it's going to keep happening, and it's going to get worse. Because all of those storms were within the last two decades, and all were the costliest in American history. Something that everyone can agree on is that Americans want cheaper, cleaner energy. And it's ours for the taking, but pretending that spending even a dime to get there is out of the question, how could we possibly afford such a thing, would get you a C- in any basic economics class. If you don't pay to invest in new technology and energy sources, you won't be able to take advantage of them. Period. Imagine if Apple made the iPod and then never took another step forward because everything beyond that was just a little too pricey. Representative Kasten explains the phenomenon easily. I feel like I need to explain something that I'm shocked that this has to be explained. We are on the Financial Services Committee and I'm trying to figure out whether people understand the difference between a capital expense and an operating expense. If you spend less money on energy, you save money. This is not complicated. Nobody gives fuel away for free. If you want to spend less money on energy, you're going to have to invest in capital that lowers the cost of energy. I've done that over the course of my career to the tune of about $200 million. If you need explanation, come and meet me. I would love to work with you on the Select Climate Op Committee because we have an opportunity to invest in our country and make us wealthier and make us cleaner. Those two things are not in conflict unless you don't understand the difference between a capital expense and an operating expense. So if you have committed your career in this body or otherwise to making our country wealthier and cleaner, God bless you. If you have committed your career to blocking investments in energy efficiency, to intentionally confusing different types of expenses to make our economy dirtier and less competitive, shame on you. I mean, come on. Republicans are supposed to be the self-described quote-unquote capitalists here. But of course it's impossible to reconcile the flaws in their argument because again, this isn't about capitalism, it's about doing the bidding of the fossil fuel companies whose money they rely on. So the next time a Republican downplays the urgency of addressing climate change, think about who really stands to benefit from their decision.